Good day, everyone. We are Group 2 from ABME 103 Section W, UBE Amazing. I am Jean Hannibal Montebon, and together with Mr. Gerard Balanova, Ms. Chloe Pua, and Mr. Jasper Revelisa, we will present a commodity analysis about UBE or this Korea Alata. The purpose of this commodity analysis is to analyze the status and improve or resolve the limiting factor in each subsystem to maximize the potential of the commodity of UBI. Purple yum, or this Korea Alata, locally referred as UBI, is one of the highest priced among commercially grown root crops. The center of origin of purple yum is unknown but it might have been cultivated as early as 8,000 BC in Southeast Asia. In the Philippines, it is usually grown in small patches of land, particularly in Ilocos, Southern Tagalog, Bicol Region, Central Visayas, and Northern Mindanao with annual production estimated at 15 metric tons. Florido, Cabisoc, Kinabayo, Kinampay, Basco, Zambal, and Leyte are the popular varieties in the Philippines. Purple yam is also introduced in other countries like China, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Thailand, and Brazil. For the input sector of ube, the major inputs to yam production are propagated vegetatively from tubers, fertilizers, trellis, manures, and fungicide materials. The tubers are often cut into sets, mini sets are planted as a whole. A hectare of yam requires 2 to 41 tons of sets. For the volume utilization, yam responds well to organic fertilizer. In per hectare rate, six bags of triple 14 inorganic fertilizers is applied. Compost tea can serve as a preventive measure for anthracnose disease, and it is usually made by soaking one half sack of 15 kilogram manure compost in 3 fourth gram that has 200 liters of water capacity for 5 to 7 days. 20,000 to 27,778 sets are needed for a 1 hectare of land, along with a 1 to 2 meter long stake as a support before the lines start crawling on the ground. From the High Value Crops Development Program of the Department of Agriculture last October 2012, the cost per unit of sets is 20 pesos per kilogram, manure is worth 250 pesos per bag, Fertilizer is 1,300 pesos per bag, fungicides are 780 pesos per kilogram, and trellis materials are worth 20 pesos per piece. Major inputs are sourced out locally. Only the inorganic fertilizers and fungicides are mostly sourced from importation. Now, let's talk about the farm sector of UBE. From 2013 to 2017, the largest area of land used for ube production in the Philippines was recorded in the year 2013 with 2,621 hectares of land, while for 2017, there were only 2,457 hectares of land. The production of ube does not significantly differ every year from 2013 to 2017, and the highest volume of production was 2014 with 15,245 metric tons. As you can see in the graph, the price of ube from 2017 to 2020 is fluctuating. Its price peaked in the fourth quarter of 2018 at 64.52 pesos and highly fluctuated down to 12 pesos in the first quarter of 2020 with the pandemic situation. For the cultural management of ube, the lawn preparation must be done with fields plowed and harrowed truly at two weeks interval. For pest management, spraying of recommended fungicides or compost tea can serve as a preventive measure for the serious disease of ube. And to suppress the nematode without adverse effect on the storage, life, germination, growth, and yield, infested tubers must be dipped into hot water. For the soil and weed management, it is recommended to mulch the planted ube with available plant residues to reduce soil temperature and increase the organic matter of the soil, and for controlling the weeds to prevent competition for nutrients. For harvest management, harvesting is done during late November and lasts until February the following year. 
the tubers that are intended for consumption and for the market are usually harvested earlier, while those intended for sets are harvested at the later part of the period. Well, for the post-harvest management, the clean tubers are collected and placed in rattan baskets, bamboo, or wooden crates with partition made from soft materials to prevent injury. It can be stored for six to seven months if it is kept in cold storage. Here are the real-life representation of cultural management practices from land preparation and replanting of sets to mulching, pre-sprouting of sets, tree lassing, training of vines, and harvesting. Ube here in the Philippines has a potential yield ranges from 20 to 56 tons per hectare. A study about macro and micronutrient fertilizers development was conducted by Annabel Tulin that assesses the effects of different levels of Biosome 200. The results of the study showed that there is an improvement in the purple yum's nutritional content with additional macro and micronutrient substances. The per hectare production of ube has a total cost of 119,690 pesos and has a gross income of 300,000 pesos during regular season and 400,000 pesos during off season. The net income during regular season is 180,310 and 280,310 during off season. For the processing sector, ube has a different food products as a flavoring ingredient medicine and its peeling as coloring additives. Ube powder can be used to make a lot of different food products and has a longer shelf life which results in a higher demand for the product. Ube jam or ube halaya is the most known product of ube and it is widely used in pastries as a spread for bread, a standalone dessert, and a staple ingredient in the most famous Filipino halo-halo. Additionally, Ube is processed into a coloring additive for it can be used as a natural way to dye purple in some products like foods, textiles, and cosmetics. Lastly, Ube has been used as a pharmaceutical product. Actually, it is a great source of carbohydrates, potassium, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that are commonly used to treat kidney and liver problems and as a contraceptive pill and steroid. The major food processors of ube are based mostly in Luzon and other foreign countries such as Australia, Canada, Japan, Taiwan, and the U.S. that demand the processed ube products. As you can see in the table, these are the top Filipino manufacturers and suppliers of different purple yam products and its number of shipments. The local manufacturer that has a most number of shipments is the Sealand Harvest Incorporated that produces grated or whole purple yam with 64 shipments. Based on our research, there are no recorded importation of purple yam from 2013 to 2019. The volume of production was allotted for exports, seeds, feeds, and waste. The year 2013 has the highest export value reaching 1,570,000 US dollars. However, the export value trend from 2013 to 2019 fluctuates rapidly. In the marketing sector, farmers, wholesalers, viajeros, retailers, local processors, and consumers are the major market channels of OB in the Philippines. The major buyers of traders are Quezon, Laguna, and Metro Manila, and the minor buyers are Quezon, Laguna, and Batangas. The volumes absorbed by channel. The traders have the largest percentage in the production of ube with 64%, retailers with 22%, and the consumers with 12%. Some of the products produced from ube included yam, powder, ube flavored ice cream, dried chips and flakes, pills, puree, yam paste, and other ube flavored foods. Products are mostly absorbed by the domestic market, but currently, the export market has a high demand for ube. Its farm price is 25 to 40 pesos per kilo and is currently sold in the market from 50 to 100 pesos per kilo. The domestic price of purple yam in the Philippines changes throughout the month. As of May 31, 2020, the last reported price in Cagayan is 0.59 US dollars 
and 0.47 US dollars in Rizal. The young production in 2011 to 2015 reached an average annual downward of 6.1%. The 15.25 thousand metric tons of PM production in 2014 dropped to 13.80 thousand metric tons in 2015. This is the current situation of, of demand and supply for the commodity, resulting in a shortage of supply, which makes it hard for the YAM industry to cater it to the increasing demand for the high valued crop. The projected increase in food availability, including YAM from 2010 to 2050 in Asia, will be 6.8% while the 2010 to 2050 change in diet contribution will be negative 0.5%. Based on the report by the UN Comtrade in the year 2019, the major exporters of yam globally are the United States, Jamaica, India, Japan, and Belgium. The top three countries that have a major share of export of yam are China with 17% share, Mexico with 10.8%, and the United States with 6.6% respectively. In the support sector, there are several institutions that support the Purple Yam Commodity System in the country, such as the RTI International, United States Agency International Development, Orient Integrated Development Consultant Incorporated, and Japan Food Chemical Research Foundation. There are several development programs and projects for OB commodity. One of the programs is for improving productivity and profitability and improvement of production through tissue culture. The other is the program to help the tribes to learn the different methods of OB farming. And lastly, the ASPIRE program, which aims to connect the farms directly to the market. The investment strategies for the productivity enhancement of UBI are supporting and funding the project of technological innovation and conducting of trainings and seminars for the local farmers. While for the infrastructure and agricultural marketing, an improvement of storage and processing facilities to help lo local industry players who are wishing to venture in processing UBI value-added products. UBI farming is facing some problems that lead to a lack of agri-services and benchmarking. The commercial production of ube has a problem such as the lack of availability of quality of planting materials, lack of post-harvest harvest facilities, lack of support, and lack of farmers' awareness and care of management. The integrated analysis. This will be the summary of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the different sectors. For the input sector, the strength is the availability of materials locally. Its weaknesses are high cost of imported materials and dependence on imported planting materials for the fungicide and inorganic fertilizers. Its opportunities are the use of alternatives to lessen cost, program for the input acquisition, use of tissue culture young plantlets, and methods for breaking dormancy. The threats are the increased price of fuels and oil, lack of training and procurement of farm inputs. For the farm sector, its strength is the advantage of kinampay variety. Its weaknesses are the shortage of supply, lack of farmer's awareness of care and maintenance for the new techniques. Its opportunities are it can thrive in a flood environment and sources of food and income for the farmers during the lean seasons. The threats are the decreasing numbers of farmers, climate change, and low production. For the processing sector, the strength is the manufacture of products globally, the weakness is the diminishing export value of the commodity, the opportunity is the collective improvements and development in terms of technologies and techniques, the threat is the inconsistent supply of raw materials. For the marketing sector, the strength is the less middlemen involved, the weakness is the high price of the crop, the opportunity is the high demand locally and globally, the threat is the climate change for the commodity. For the support sector, the strength is the improve and increase farmers' productivity, the weakness is the lack of agri-services and benchmarking among other countries, the opportunity is the room for additional institutions to support the commodity and the threats are the lack of successors, 
this interest of the youth to agriculture and the climate change. Upon thorough assessment of the commodity, the group came up with the conclusions and recommendations. So it will be is underutilized crop in the Philippines despite its high potential in the local and global market. Even with the advantage of being capable of surviving in a rigorous environment, Uve still faces a shortage in its supply of good quality yams, making it difficult to meet its increasing demand. However, the big potential of the commodity purple yam was steamed by the shortage of supply, limiting the production for domestic and export due to the seasonality of the crop. The second problem is the lack of support from different sectors to facilitate the movement of Uve commodity. The local farms are not literate enough to engage in innovative technology due to lack of experience and training. The third problem is the decreasing number of farmers due to lack of interest of the youth to pursue agriculture, especially in the OVA industry. The last problem is the inadequate budget support to the OVA industry. Many programs proposed by the DA and other research development sectors were paralyzed due to lack of budget funds. Based on the group's assessments, the recommended solution for these problems should start in the coordinated work and support from the government. To resolve the problem and shortage of supply, through coordination and support from the government and other stakeholders, the local farmers will be provided innovative input technologies like robotics, soil fertility monitoring devices. With that being said, the young generation should be encouraged to get involved in farming for the different sectors like the OSD, DA, and other private sectors. They should offer more scholarships for students pursuing agriculture and more career opportunities with higher income to remove the stigma about farmers. The proposed solution re require financial support. The government must prioritize and allot secured budget for the UBE industry. Consolidated efforts from different players in the industry must be exerted, especially in the research and development sector of the commodity to address the different problems and challenges recurring in the industry. So here are the proposed strategies in different area of concern in the industry. For research and development, like utilization of biotechnology, for the budget allocation, to set an adequate for research and development of Uber production, processing and marketing, for the market or trading system, like establishing a transporting system of the commodity. And lastly, the information dissemination, like encouraging the youth to be the next generation of growers. To have a high quality produce, our group highly recommends to use a technology that is capable of monitoring the soil fertility. Here is the Terralytic Wireless Soil Pro. It is capable to, to measure the temperature, humidity, and light at the soil surface. They also test soil moisture, temperature, salinity, pH level, nitrate, potassium, and phosphorus. So, moreover, to address shortage of supply in the OB industry during COVID-19 pandemic, there should be an improved marketing channel, whereas there will be a systemic flow of production and trading. So here is the proposed marketing channel for the OB commodity. And again, this has been the Team OB Amazing. Thank you for listening.